my name is Kelly Bluen. I am a certified Zentangle teacher. Welcome to day 24 of Inktober. Today's tangle is called Halibaw, which if you've been doing Zentangle for any amount of time, I'm sure that you have heard of Halibaw. It was created by, it's a Zentangle, official tangle, and created by Maria's daughter, Molly Halibaw. It's a beautiful tangle and for some reason, this one was like my most, I don't know, like I had the most anxiety leading up to it because it's such a simple, easy tangle that's been done a million times, but there's so many variations. So trying to figure out how I wanted to show you and what I wanted to show you was a little bit tricky. Okay, so I'm using a Micron 01 pen and I'm just using a piece of copy paper. I printed a calendar off the internet you can find it on my Facebook page called Let's Tangle. And then I added an extra line in here so that I could write down the name of each tangle because I forget the names often. Okay, I'm gonna do it on here first and then I'm moving to a piece of mixed media art paper, kind of a watercolor paper. And I'm going to combine all 31 tangles. So stay tuned and you can join me for that. Okay. I'm going to start by showing you the most basic form of halibut. So all that it is, is a series of lines that um, kind of look like roads or highways. So we make a line from one end to the other, and then we aura it. Aura just means we go beside it. Then we do another line. And there's something that Zentangle calls the Halibaw method, which is um, a method of going behind another object or tangle. So I'm going to lift my pen, jump to the other side, and come out. And now it looks as though that line is going behind the other one. So same thing. Like that. Some people like to start with a thicker or a wider line and then get more narrow as you keep going. And it looks like they're getting deeper and thinner as they go more into the background. So it's a very relaxing tangle and Whenever I teach this, um, I must have heard it from Rick or Maria, but um, I always say when you think you're done, add a couple more lines. So you feel like you're at the end, but keep going. Keep trying to put these lines in wherever you can. And it's beautiful how they start to just disappear into the background, fade away into the background. Okay, this is again the most basic form and I'm going to show you right here how you would um, shade this. So one thing you can do is shade on the inside areas of Hollybaugh and that makes those look like they're dark and like they're kind of deep. Another way to shade is each time one of these bars goes over another, we add just a little bit of shading on each side. So this one goes over this bar, this one goes over here, this one goes over these. And you do all of that and you just soften it a little bit and it gives that illusion of a tiny shadow. Mine's pretty dark, I apologize, but you get the idea. Okay, so now we get to have some fun on our larger piece of paper. And really the, um, the ideas are, are endless with what you can do with this, either on the bar itself or in the spaces in between. So I'm gonna move over to my large piece of paper I've got going here. See if I can zoom out. Okay. 
This is where I'm putting all of the tangles for all 31 days, just kind of piling them in here. So for Hollabaugh, I'm going to switch over to a thicker pen, which is a Micron PN plastic nib. I just like working with that on this thicker paper. And I'm also going to um, do some drawing with a pencil, which typically in Zentangle you do not do, and you do not do any erasing, but I'm going to break the rules today and draw with my pencil. Okay, so I think I'm going... I think I'm gonna just try to put Hollabaugh in here and fill in some of this background area. So let me get, zoom in a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my pencil and I'm gonna work in this area right here. And I don't have like an edge here where my bars, you know, would stop. So a couple of options. One is um, that I just draw in some sort of a shape or a border. Or I could have a couple go all the way across my paper, which might be kind of fun. Um, I'm going to just draw in a little bit of a shape there. And I still might have some go all the way across. Okay, so I want to play around with this idea of drawing a bar. Again, I'm starting with my pencil just to try out something new. And I'm going to make a bar go right there. And then I'm gonna play around with this idea that we've got a little window. And people have been drawing this where the next bar just goes underneath and you can see through that little window. It's so cute. But I wanted to try something a little bit different, which is where the next one goes under one side, but then comes out and goes over another. So I'm just gonna do this one or two times. So I'm going to put one this way. I didn't really make it go over far enough. Good thing I'm in pencil here. Okay. So I'm going to have it go under this bar and then come through and go right over that next line. So I stopped and went under this one and then I came out and went over this one. And now when I ink that in, I'll show you what that looks like. I'm going to ink in this line all the way. I hope this isn't too complicated. I just wanted to teach you something new. Okay, so now I've got the bottom of this window, but when it comes up, I'm gonna let this bar come through. I'm also gonna round these edges as they touch an object, kind of splay them out a little bit, just for fun. Okay, now if I've got my eraser, hopefully I don't smear anything. It gives the illusion that this bar went through the center. So I kind of like that. I'll do one over here. I'm gonna do another window. This time I'm not doing it in pencil because I'm not gonna do one that it comes in and out again. I'm just gonna let one go behind it and peek through. See how that one's just peeking through, but this one, because I left this part intact and erased that, it, it kind of pops out there. Okay, so now I'm just gonna play with adding some more bars. This one actually would come out over here. And I'm gonna swoop that edge a little bit. See how that's kind of bringing all of these odd shaped tangles together? Again, using that go behind method, the Hollabaugh method. Yours is not gonna look like mine and that's okay.
trying to make them crisscross behind each other as much as I can. Need to put some over here. All right, I'm gonna add some more, um, but I wanna start showing you some other variations. So one thing that you can do is as you're making this, decide if you are going to want to fill in the bar shapes or fill in the area that's left in the background. Often when I make halibut, I fill all of this in with dark ink and it gives it a real sense of depth. So that's kind of fun. Okay. So I'm going to stop there for a minute and just show you how to decorate one of these bars. So in this one here, I'm going to put orbs. Just like that, ink in those extra spaces. And look at how that changes the look of those bars. You can also do just some lines. or even some curves. So let's see, on this one right here, I'm gonna do like a bump, bump. And see how that looks very different than the straight lines. Fill all those in. like that. And then on the inside of these, you could fill it with orbs. And ink in those extra spaces. Like that. You could also add um, other tangles that you have done. So maybe you want to put tag in here. Remember tag was those little bumps with the blackened area. So many fun options. You could also do some lines like that. I mean, seriously, there's so many things you could do. You could also add color. Anyway, go ahead and have fun playing with this. And then I think I'm just going to go ahead and add kind of a fake border there. And I'm going to keep adding some more lines and decorations. But halibut is so fun. I really wanted to take one of these all the way to the edge of the paper but I forgot to do that. So anyway, enjoy, have fun. I hope you like the two options of the window and of the kind of a poke through one. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks.